Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of choosing carefully who you surround yourself with. The truth is, who we hang out with on a consistent basis plays a big role in who we become. You ultimately become a product of your environment. You'll notice if you hang out with people who are always complaining or who are unmotivated, you will feel that same energy. Alternatively, when you're around motivated, happy, and positive people, you will also feel that same energy and motivation. Energy is contagious and affects us whether that energy is dull and inspired or that energy is having a zest for life. The truth is, you get to choose which people and energies that best serve you and inspire you to become the best version of yourself. Learning to pick and choose the people and energy you want to surround yourself with is the key to living your best life. Surrounding yourself with people who encourage you, inspire you, and uplift you will be one of the determining factors on who you ultimately become. As the saying goes, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, um, let's talk about your first book. If you want to be rich and be happy, don't go to school. So I wrote, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school because my poor dad died broke. Mm. And I never forgot that. I went, you went to school all those, you went to Stanford, Northwestern, wow. University of Chicago, University of Hawaii. You died broke. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wrote, if you want to get rich and happy, don't go to school because our schools will never teach you this because most school teachers are Marxist. Next up on the show, we have American businessman and author Robert Kiyosaki. Robert is best known for his number one personal finance book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that has over 30 million copies sold in over 90 countries. Robert, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you. How are you doing? Well, I'm, be, I'm very happy to be talking to you, and I'm even happier that you're in Toronto. And I was I was a little bit late getting here because I was on a phone call to Vancouver, Canada. Oh, nice. I, I, I love Canada. You know, I've, I've done so much business up there. And uh, it's always one of my, you know, I, I took three companies public on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Oh, nice. So uh, I have a lot of fond memories and the great people. And I enjoy, I enjoy Canada. Anyway. Yeah. Toronto is great and so is Canada. I've basically lived here my whole life and the only thing I have to complain about is the weather <laughs> because I don't like the snow and the cold. But other than that, it's a fantastic, fantastic city and Canada is an amazing place to live in. <laughs> so let's just dive right into it. Let's talk about your early beginnings. I read somewhere that you joined the Marines as a helicopter gunshot pilot during the Vietnam War. So wow. talk to us about that experience and how did it shape you into who you are today? Well, uh, it's a good question. I, I was draft exempt, and you're too young to know this, but you know, the protests we're having today, in the 60s, there were massive protests against the war. Mm. And I was draft exempt, and so a lot of guys my age back in the 60s were running to Canada. Mm. And so that was that song, Canadian Woman, and all this stuff, you know. Mm. But um, I was draft exempt because I worked for Standard Oil of California. Mm. And if you work in the word, the magic word oil, your your uh, non-defense vital industry, which meant I was draft exempt. Mm -hmm. But the war was, they drafted my kid brother. My family during World War II, I had five uncles fight in, uh, in Europe against mm -hmm. the Germans and the Italians. Mm -hmm. I had two uncles fight in Japan against the Japanese. One was captured. And uh, so it's in our family to serve our country militarily. And that's possibly because my family is samurai. You know, we, we come from samurai, samurai heritage. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I went to Vietnam, although I didn't have to. I gave up a high paying job with Standard Oil. I went from making like 4,000 a month to 200 a month as a Marine Lieutenant. Wow. And so it was one of the best experiences of my life just because I grew up a lot. Yeah. And I have a different I have a different view of the world, especially now with all these protests and you know this. Uh, see, America is going socialist. 
Mm-hmm. That, that really disturbs me. So I fought, I'm a capitalist and I fought against socialism and communism and Marxism. So that's how it affected me and it still affects my brain. And I'm not a very popular person because I don't think we should give people money. I think we should teach people to fish, not give them fish. And so I'm a capitalist. That's mm-hmm. the difference. Mm-hmm. And you've been very successful <laughs> in your career as well. Um, so let's talk about what were your next steps after the Marines? Well, when, when I got out, I got out in 74 and I had, I could go back to Standard Oil. I could fly for United Airlines as a pilot or I could become an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And so my poor dad was my, he was a PhD. You know, he said to me, uh, go back to school, get your master's degree and your PhD. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said, I'll, I wind up like you, you know, PhD stands for poor, helpless and desperate. Oh, wow. Because I grew up in a family of school teachers mm-hmm. and they're all broke. So then I asked my rich dad, I think what sh- he was my best friend's father, and he says, you know, what should I do? And he says, be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if you know this, but most, the reason most people don't become entrepreneurs is because they don't have the skills required to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Like number one skill, <laughs> can you sell, but can you raise capital? Mm-hmm. So the reason I'm in Toronto a lot <laughs> and Vancouver, is I was up there racing capital. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's what the average person cannot do. Mm-hmm. So the reason I make uh, so much money, I don't, I don't know where my charts are, but um, I'll show you the difference uh, right here. So this is the story of rich dad, poor dad. So my rich dad had no college degree, but he had a very strong financial statement. Mm-hmm. And poor mm-hmm. dad was a PhD. Mm-hmm. And you can't get 10 cents for this piece of paper, but this piece of paper allows me to raise as much money as I want on your capital markets. Mm-hmm. So I'm a capitalist, mm-hmm. he's a Marxist. Mm-hmm. And it's because of how we teach in schools. So uh, that's where um, 1974, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I didn't want to fly for the airlines and I didn't want to be an employee so I went to work for the Xerox Corporation to gain the basic skill of an entrepreneur, which is learning how to sell. Mm-hmm. And today, I, you know, I just raised another thirty million dollars yesterday. Mm-hmm. The average person can't get a credit card because of no financial education. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you know. Just because someone goes to school does not mean even if they have a PhD, a degree, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be successful. And honestly, to be an entrepreneur as well, it's it's extremely difficult. But I think that you learn valuable life tools, and if you're able to really sell yourself, then you can make a ton of money and you're a perfect example of that. I want to talk about, I know there was a seminar that you attended and that it changed your life. So what inspired you that day? Well, I was getting out of the Marine, the same time I was getting out and I had to decide whether I was going to follow in my poor dad's footsteps and go back to get my PhD or was I going to be an entrepreneur. So I did a thing called EST, EST. And that was there. I think they're gone now, but it really it was a personal development, and it changed it changed the way I, I looked at the world. I stopped blaming the world for my problems. That was the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. And so I realized, you know, that that old saying, "If it's to be, it's up to me." And I didn't have any money. You know, in 1974, as a college graduate, I could have flown for the airlines. I'd be making about. 400,000 a year. I could sell for Standard Oil making 400,000 a year, but I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the, the, was asked. And I said, I'm never going to allow anybody to tell me how much money I can make. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of the big changer. And I stopped blaming the world, the government and businesses and corporations. And I said, I want to be a capitalist. So if you look at this here, this is book number two in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And my poor dad, uh, this is him here, you know, go to school, get a job. Or my mother wanted me to be a doctor, a specialist. Mm -hmm. This is what you go to school for. Mm -hmm. 
this is rich dad mm -hmm. business 500 employees or more and the i stands for investor but it's an inside investor so mm -hmm. i don't have stocks bonds mutual funds or etfs i invest from the inside mm -hmm. and b also stands for brand so when people say well how much money do you make i say well how much is the rich dad brand worth mm -hmm. it's worth a lot of money mm -hmm. but the average person because they went to regular school like on this side here they don't know this side here mm -hmm. and that's causing i don't know if you know this but the world's in serious financial trouble today all over the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. serious serious trouble and the reason is our school teachers are teaching this stuff. And what the world needs to know is this stuff here. Mm -hmm. This is financial education. This is garbage. Yeah, definitely. I definitely do think my mom always says this because she's a financial planner and she always says they need to have courses teaching kids finance and how to, you know, save money and those kind of things. So I, I think that's really important. I want to ask you, well, you know, well, can, can I stop one second? Sure. I don't save money. Mm -hmm. And that's part of financial education. I don't use financial planners. I just want to be very clear on that. It's, it's not right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just that financial planners are for these guys here. This side is different. Mm -hmm. And the reason I have gold, silver and Bitcoin is because I don't trust the US dollar, nor do I trust the Canadian loony or the Japanese yen or the peso or the euro. Mm -hmm. So it's I have a different world view. So that, that's I just not one not that one is right or wrong is that when once you cross over to this side, it's a different world, mm -hmm. very different. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Grant Cardone, he's a real estate investor um, on our show a couple weeks ago and he said the same thing. He said, I don't save money. So where do you put your money into? Where do you reinvest the money you make into? I don't, I borrow money. I use debt. Okay. And then I just save gold, silver, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. That's all. I mean, it's, it's a very simple formula. Mm -hmm. I just don't trust my government. You know, Trump is my really good friend. People hate the guy. But I've been doing business with him for years. And he's a very, very good man. My wife loves him. Mm -hmm. His kids are great kids. But because social media from Silicon Valley has just nailed his, you know, he got, he was put up on charges of being a Russian agent the, from day one. They tried to court martial him and they impeach him. Uh, I don't know what else they've tried to do to call him a, a bigot, a racist. And that's because it comes out of Jeff uh, Silicon Valley with this guy, um, Bezos, Zuckerberg, and Dorsey of Twitter. I'm taken off of Twitter all the time and Facebook shuts me down all the time. And all I'm saying to you, all, all, all I say to the world is what I'm saying to you today. I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with that? I don't save dollars. I mm -hmm. save gold, silver, Bitcoin. So I was in Toronto on the Toronto Stock Exchange, mm -hmm. raising capital to start a gold mine in China, a silver mine in Argentina, and oil companies in America. Mm -hmm. I'm a capitalist. I am not a communist. Well, you've been very successful at what you do, so your opinion is definitely extremely valid. Um, let's talk about your first book. If you want to be rich and be happy, don't go to school. So I want to ask you what inspired this book? I know you talked a little bit about it already, but what inspired this book and what, it's, what is it about? You're the best, Ariel. <laughs> I, I, uh, I flunked out of school because I can't write. And I, after I did that program called EST, I said, you know, if you can't write, then I'm handicapped. You know, it's like having handcuffs on my brain. Mm -hmm. So I, my wife, Kim, who I love dearly, you know, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. God marry mm -hmm. smart women, you know. <laughs> weren't rich, but she was smart. Mm -hmm. She was in network marketing and all those other things that people say you shouldn't do. When I met her, I mean, she's drop dead gorgeous like you. Oh, and you. she loved business and she liked men. A lot of women hate men, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a Marine and she's, she doesn't mind me being a Marine. Do, do you know what I mean? I am, 
a lot of women don't like men, if you know what I mean. They, they want them a little bit more on the other side. Of the, you know, it's a different world today. You know, I, you can you can choose. You can choose gay guys or straight guys and all other things. But anyway, what, so she says to me, you'd better write a book because you've so, got all this stuff pent up inside of you. you know, I, got, I got this stuff. You know, you know so much about money, but you don't tell anybody about it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school, because I was practicing. When you mm -hmm. look at this thing here, again, poor dad, PhD, broke, no money, mm -hmm. poor, helpless, desperate. That's what it stands for. And then you have rich dad, financial statement. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school, because they'll never teach you that. Mm -hmm. They'll never teach you a financial statement. Mm -hmm. So that's so that's why I was practicing, and then this is the latest book that came out. It's called "Who Stole My Pension," mm -hmm. and I don't know if you know this, but the biggest crisis coming in America. This came out in January of 2020. The biggest crisis coming is our pensions are broke. Mm -hmm. All over the world, our pensions are broke because Wall Street, and I do mean Wall Street specifically, sold the world all of these toxic assets. So when you look at the back here, like this. The back of this book says it's toxic assets, mm -hmm. fake assets. Mm -hmm. And the world's going to go broke because of Wall Street and the U.S. government, the Federal Reserve Bank and the Treasury. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I know so much about it is because, like I said, I love Canada. You guys are much more honest than Americans. <laughs> and I'm, I'm serious. You're, you're much better at it. And so when I was on the Toronto Stock Exchange, I learned more about the U.S. stock market because I was in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And so all I'm saying here is this, you know, I've been a lifelong student, but I've not done ever well in school. I learn in the real world. Mm -hmm. So I will, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school because my poor dad died broke. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that. I went... You went to school all those, you went to Stanford, Northwestern, wow. University of Chicago, University of Hawaii. You died broke. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wrote, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. Because our schools will never teach you this because most school teachers are Marxist. And they don't know they're Marxist because they don't study as much as I study. And it's very simple. I'll give you the reason they're Marxist is when they teach economics in school, they teach Keynesian economics, John Maynard Keynes. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. socialist Marxist. Mm -hmm. If they were teaching capitalist Marxist, they would be teaching Austrian school of economics. And Austrian school of economics comes from St. Thomas of Aquinas, that economics had to be legal, ethical, and moral. Where did you get all this wealth of knowledge with, um, you know, investing your money or and all of this stuff, just with wealth and money, where did you learn all of this stuff from that you teach in Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Where, where did all this knowledge come to you from? Hey, I, I'm not kidding you. I learned a lot from Canadians. <laughs> wow, I love this. You keep talking about Canada, it's great. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not bullshitting you. I'm not blowing smoke. I, when, when I was in Toronto, I ran a bunch of these guys from Hungary. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of Hungarians in Toronto. Mm. And they had to jump over the wall in 56. So they ran from Russia. So they knew communism. So when I started hanging out with these guys from Hungary and what I, what my experience was in Vietnam, I realized that our school system was teaching people what my friends, you know, Gabor and all these guys were running away from. Mm -hmm. So today we have these communists running America. Mm -hmm. I learned more from those Canadian guys, but they're Hungarian refugees. Mm -hmm. they're, they're tough sons of, you know, they were tough guys. I liked them. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I, I love that you were inspired by people and you love Canada. I, I really do like that. Have you been surprised by the success of Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Because it's one of the most famous books in the world. Everybody knows it. Were you surprised when it became just such a worldwide sensation? Uh, Daryl, it's, it's 25 years. It's still number one in the world. Yeah. And I flunked out of high school because I can't write. So think about that, 
do, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And also, Rich Dad Poor Dad was turned down by the New York Times and all these guys because, mm -hmm. because they're communists. I'm trying to say something to you. Our schools are Marxist. Mm -hmm. Most school teachers, like my poor dad, are Marxist. They don't know it, but they teach people, I call it Robin Hood economics, take from the rich by taxing them mm -hmm. and put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, I just woke up a lot working in Canada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think it's hysterical you know that's the and just before i got on the phone call with you i was talking to marin katusa out of vancouver and you guys are naturally smart I, I don't know what it is i have so much fun in canada i have no comments on that as much as i would love to comment on that i have to be <laughs> no, very I, diplomatic <laughs> every time i talk to canadians there is a, a practicalness to them mm -hmm. does that make sense there, yes there, that's they're just more sound. They're not into Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I've, I've, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's, I was talking to Marin Cotus out of Vancouver, and he's talking to me about how the Green New Deal, you know, the, the communist socialists are going to make capitalists richer. Mm -hmm. Whereas Americans don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. So I talk to my friends and they go, oh, this, 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 this. But I just like it. I just like it. You have to be kind of realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, Americans aren't realistic. Mm -hmm. Canadians are very practical. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I, I agree with that. You know, our show is all about inspiration and you're a huge inspiration. What I want to talk about three things that have made you successful. What are three traits that you think have made you successful as an entrepreneur? Well, part of the thing about if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. One of the biggest mistakes, this three mistakes school make, okay? First of all, they teach you nothing about money. Mm. You know what? Very true. It's ridiculous. Why don't they teach you about money? Number two, they punish you for making mistakes. I mean, mm. the only reason I'm successful is because I've made so many mistakes I learned from them. Mm. You know, I fell down so many times and all that. You know, like my Chinese deal I cut in Toronto on the Toronto Stock Exchange. We opened a gold mine in China. We are very successful. And those bloody Chinese took my company from me. It was a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. And the average person goes, oh, the Chinese are such nice people. No, they're not. They're communists. <laughs> not that the Chinese are bad, but the Communist Party, they will take your property. And that's what my friends from Toronto, who were Hungarians, were trying to tell me, is that in a communist country, they'll take your business. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening in America today. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's, that's kind of, so number two, they teach you don't make mistakes. And number three is they tell you, you, you must study on your own. In other words, you can't ask for help on a test. Mm -hmm. But during mm -hmm. test time in school, I was very cooperative. I was sat next to the smartest girl. And I sit there and you know get my answers from the, from the girl. Well, they call that cheating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's called being cooperative. So today, one of the reasons I know so much is because, like I said, just now I got off the phone with Marin Katusa. He's one of the smartest Canadian, he's the smart, one of the smartest guys I know. Mm -hmm. I don't know one tenth of what he knows, but I talk to him and he's telling me what's going on in this business and that business and that business. An academic like my poor dad, again here, that's cheating. Very interesting. I'm, interesting. I'm, I am very, I hang out with very smart people. I don't hang out with socialists, communists, Marxists and stupid people. I have almost no friends that are school teachers. I can't talk to them. My whole family, they're very good people, they got me wrong. They're very, very good people. But they went to school and they learned Marxism, but they don't know it. Keynesian economics. Keynesian economics basically says you can print as much money as you like. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that's what happened in Venezuela, happened in Havana, happened in Germany during before World War II. That's what happened in Zimbabwe. They just keep printing money. So America is printing more money than ever before in world history. 
In 2020, we printed more money in America in 2020 than we did in the first 200 years of American existence. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. Keynesian, Marxist, socialist economics. That's what they teach in school. That's mm -hmm. why there's no financial education in school. Yeah, you mentioned there's no financial educations in schools. However, your company, what I love, does coaching and teaches people about money. So let's talk about that. How can people take your classes and coaching and, you know, maybe become a millionaire one day? Or well, billionaire, billionaire. <laughs> the sky's the limit. This is a commercial, but this is my little cash flow game. <laughs> and the reason I created the cash flow game is because the most boring subject on planet Earth is accounting. Mm. It's the single most boring subject. So that's why when you look at this picture here, you have, again, PhD, and you have financial statement. Mm -hmm. This is your report card when you leave school. When I go talk to my banker, I, I talk to my banker on Monday, and I want to borrow $27 million from him. The average person cannot borrow $27 million. As I said, the number one skill of an entrepreneur is how to raise capital. Mm -hmm. So I went, to my, I went to my banker and I said, I want to I want to borrow 27 million. Well, of course they say yes, because I have a financial statement. Mm -hmm. That's true. So my wife and I, when people kept asking us, how do we do it? We created this board game here called Cash Flow. Mm -hmm. So you could have fun playing the game and um, but this is this is the real game board inside the inside the game. It's called it's called a financial statement. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is this is an income statement. Mm -hmm. This is called a balance sheet, mm -hmm. and this is called a statement of cash flow. Ninety nine percent of your school teachers have no idea what that is, and they're mm -hmm. teaching our kids. Yeah. And so this here is poor dad. You know, go to school, get a high paying job. And this was my rich dad here, you acquire assets. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple, and but it takes time to learn how to keep moving the numbers around. So we created a cash flow board game. And there's cash flow clubs all over the world today, people teaching people, and they're having fun learning. So I, when I was in business school, the most boring subject was accounting. Mm -hmm. And so that's why my wife and I created the cash flow board game, so you could have fun learning the most boring subject possible. And nice. what the game teaches <laughs> you is the importance of acquiring assets. Mm -hmm. And then the average person is told get out of debt, but the reason I'm a rich man is I use debt, I borrow money to buy assets. Mm -hmm. Borrow money to buy assets. And then if you look here, I pay no taxes legally. Mm. That's what capitalists do. Mm -hmm. so when, you, when you ask, I, I thank you for asking the question, but you know, we make it as fun as possible. Here's here's the little book that goes with it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can you can um, have fun learning. And, and what we say is, you know, just awaken your financial genius because there's so many different ways you can get rich today. Mm -hmm. Look at that little iPhone, you know, that, that Steve Jobs created, the iPhone. You can sit in Mississauga and become a billionaire selling to the world. Mm -hmm. I can sit in Zimbabwe with a cell phone and get rich because I'm accessing the world. I didn't have that when I, in 1975 when I first started. So it's never been easier today to get rich, but you can't do it if you went to school because you're going to pay the highest taxes. The people that pay the highest taxes, if you look at this here, this is book number two, they pay 40% in taxes. These guys here pay 60%. These are doctors and attorneys. They pay the 60% in taxes. The big business guys, like your corporations, they pay 20%. And these guys here who are inside investors, they pay zero in taxes. Mm -hmm. And when I, and so, you know, President Trump, again, who's a friend of mine, I, don't, I know people hate him. 
he says things he shouldn't say. But the New York Times got after him because he only paid $750 in taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason he only paid $750 in taxes is because he, he has no job. <laughs> These guys pay the taxes. These guys pay the taxes. But guys like Trump and I, because we're on this side, we don't pay taxes legally. So the reason Trump didn't pay taxes is because he didn't take a paycheck as president of the United States. Mm -hmm. So since he has no income, he paid no income tax. Mm -hmm. But the New York Times said that. Mm -hmm. That's how bad our education system is. That's how bad our press is. So anyway, that's so that's why you know he and I are good friends is because we believe in teaching people to be capitalists, not to be socialists, Marxists, or communists. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. And last but not least, I want to ask you, what does success mean to you? Well, I think the happiest thing in my yesterday, you know, I mean, you know how hard it was to publish Rich Dad Poor Dad. I got turned down by every editor, every New York, New York editor, you know, publishing house. They said, you don't know what you're talking about. So I got turned down and finally I had to self-publish the book. I put the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, in a car wash in Austin, Texas, because no, no bookstore would touch it. Wow. And so it sat in this car wash in Austin, Texas. And it's a true story. And then it sold. Wow. And Oprah called me on her show and all this because Oprah understood it. Oprah's a capitalist. She's a very smart woman. So she said that. But the happiest thing that's today, yesterday I was walking out of my office and this young guy comes up to me and says, hey, thank you. My dad gave me your book. I go to the supermarket and these kids and they're, they're from Pakistan and they're kind of hiding out in the supermarket. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know they're legal. But mm -hmm. their work in the supermarket, they say, thank you for your book and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was in the gym and this young couple from Venezuela, all from Colombia, say, thank you for your book. Mm -hmm. well, that's the most important thing to me. It's, it's, I don't get any money for it, but I enjoy it because mm -hmm. I've done my job and I've educated the next generation. Mm -hmm. because our schools will never teach them this because our school system is part of a Marxist system. Well, you are definitely a huge inspiration to everyone in the world. Your story is remarkable, and I thank you so much for being on the show today. It really is an honor. So thank you for making the time to make this happen. Well, Daryl, Daryl, thank, thank you very much, because I'm very sincere about when I said, oh, she's from Toronto. I really yeah. like Toronto. Yeah, do you, do you see the CN Tower? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, fabulous country, fabulous pe people. I don't care for your prime minister, but anyway, you know, he's like he's like Gavin Newsom out of California, another Marxist. But anyway, oh, that's right. life. That's life. It's free country. Choose what you want. So anyway, thank you, Dale. Great, great working with you. And last but not least, I have to ask you. My mom is such a big fan of yours. <laughs> if you could just do a small shout out to her, she would. It would make her day. <laughs> well, to your mom. Her name is Cheryl, Cheryl Roy. How do you spell her name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Congratulations on having a fabulous daughter. That's the most important job of a parent is to have great young kids who grow up to be great people. So congratulations. And uh, Cheryl, you're the best. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you, Robert. And come on the show anytime. You're always welcome. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.